everybody, I'm Tom Basil. I'm Sam Healy. Welcome to a live Q&A. So the live Q&A, the title below says live Q&A with Sam, and yet I'm here, which is jerky of me to pop in. And mm -hmm. Actually, no. I'm just here for the very beginning of this, and then I'm going to pop over and let Sam have the Q&A to himself. Yeah. We just got back from Dice Tower Retreat, which was amazing. Very fun. And seriously, if you didn't come, consider coming next year because it is FOMO. Oh, <laughs> no. you, never, you, you don't have a fear of missing out anymore because it's over. So well, there is that. I don't, I don't know that I want to do that anyway. Anyway, the reason I'm here today with Sam is because Sam has an announcement and then I want to do a couple clarifications for my end and then I'm out. Yep. All right. Well, there's no real easy way to say this so I'm just gonna say it and I usually don't beat around the bush anyway so here it is starting in 2020 I will be exiting from the dice tower and I won't be returning and the reason for this is basically uh, family reasons that's the easiest way to put it and and still keep my privacy intact and that type of stuff but um, this is much like ripping a band-aid off a wound I think it, 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 well, it probably yeah, feels that way yeah but, I know that this this seems uh, sudden and it's yeah it's it, not it's very much not sudden very 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 much not sudden but uh, this is something that's been going on for a while uh, and so yeah that's the announcement so I'll throw it back over to you yeah okay so a couple things okay <laughs> first of all no one ever believes these when people say them like oh well you know yeah. Sam will say I had a good time at the dice tower and then you're like well What's going on there? Okay, it's not like that. I've known Sam for a candidate 23 years. Yeah, uh, we've been friends that long, and the, just it's a it's a physical location thing more than anything else. And in fact, very much. This is not keeping Sam off the dice tower. Nope. There's a good chance you'll see him on the dice tower in the future. You may not see the the three of us doing our Miami thing together, but if he's at a convention or whatever. You'll see him back. He is welcome, and we're sad to see him go. You like you Roy's over there him. crying right now. No, he's not. He's no. not crying. He is sad, though. <laughs> um, so that's that's one thing. I want to make that really clear. A, Sam can come back anytime, be with us anytime, and this is, you know, it is what it is, you know. Um, secondly, when the Q&A comes, please don't pepper Sam with questions about the whys and the whereas. It's, it is what it is. And, <laughs> That's you true. know, you can, yeah. you know, I mean, it's up to you, Sam, how much he shares about what's happening in the future. And as time goes by, you'll see that. Yep. Thirdly, if you are a publisher or in the game industry, <laughs> you need to hire Samuel. Oh, my I'll goodness. give him a good recommendation. He, the, the market's open. Okay. But uh, Sam's. Uh, Very empty market. Sam needs to be able to work remotely to some degree. But he can yeah. still go to conventions and stuff. Okay. But. Do it. Email me or Sam. That's Sam at DiceTower.com. He has not lost his DiceTower.com address. Oh, really? We haven't got another Sam. <laughs> and then the... I just have to make sure they don't hire another guy named Sam. Well, and okay, so then the biggest question is, well, what happens with Sam gone? Yeah. There are currently no plans in the work. If for some reason you're interested, email me at Tom at DiceTower.com. But we are looking for someone who needs to be in Homestead. Yeah. That's it. I have no other plans beyond that. Sam's going to be with us for a while. You said to the end of the year. Yes. Of course, things could change. Correct. And so it's a kind of a loosey-goosey type thing. Right. And you will be at Essen. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be at whatever you want me to be at until... So he'll be at nothing. No, no. He'll be at... <laughs> <laughs> he'll be at Essen. He'll be at... Um, uh, PAX, PAX. Maybe the cruise. It, we, again, it all depends on the timeline and how everything works out. Yep. Absolutely. So, so that's that. Now I'm out. That's all pretty much I had to say. So Sam has questions that he has answered. We got a gazillion of them already. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you the thing about Tapestry. None of us have played it yet. <laughs> yep. I didn't play it because everybody else is playing it. And the same thing is true with Yeah. We'll get to it eventually. Else. Yeah. So there you go. All right. Well, thanks, Tom. Um, all right. I scrolled back to the top. So let's go through this. And let's see. All right, Tom's crashing the party. What's up? Um, there goes all the. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll go ahead and put that one over. Uh, Chad Stilson says I saw someone had tapestry. Tom just talked about this, but uh, it. Well, I don't want to use the word literally, but it literally felt like tapestry never stayed on the shelf for more than a few seconds. Uh, it was played and played and played, and sometimes it didn't even make it back to the shelves. Uh, at least that was 
that's what the report was that I was receiving. So um, from people who were talking about it and it was constantly played. So I am not trying to hype it. I don't, I have not played it, uh, but people were playing that thing off the hook. So there you have it. Um, let's see, any chance you guys will do a con in the Northeast? Um, well, I don't think any of that is in the works. We have Dice, Dice Tower East here in, uh, down here in Orlando, and that's pretty much the East Coast. You know, um, I know I know travel is expensive, but it's it's not like we're asking you to come from the West Coast on over, and that's the only one we have. We have. Dice Tower East, Dice Tower West, and then we go to as many of the different conventions as we possibly can. So uh, PAX Unplugged is the one that's up in the Northeast for us, and that's the one we usually try to frequent so we can uh, kind of uh, get that region of the country and, and the fans that are up there. So, uh, yeah, well, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about what we started with, because, dang it. Um, yeah, I'm just not gonna do it, I don't think I can. So, we'll talk about it later. Let's scroll down and see what we got. Uh, some of the things that we're thinking about doing as far as uh, me staying on part-time and that type of stuff is, I might take on some of the, uh, some how-to-play videos. Um, because, and the reason that popped up is because I usually am a little bit more, I don't know, uh, a stickler for the details or I want to cover the details when I'm doing in my reviews and that type of stuff, which makes my reviews longer. So what we're thinking about possibly doing in some way, shape, or form is having me take on some of that in a part-time basis, just doing you know one or two of those a week or something to that effect, since they will take a little bit longer to produce. Um, but we've got stuff like that in the works, possibly. So we're, we're keeping track. Uh, this is not a, uh, a complete you know about face. It's just that I have to move. Um, and, and that's the way I'm going at it. So, there you have it. Uh, let's see here. Um, Ryan Cochran says, Sam, thank you. I'm sure that means thank you. Thank you for introducing me to, to Theocracy. What are some other Christian metal bands you enjoy? Uh, well, uh, White Cross, um, Golden Resurrection, um, man, I'm trying to remember. I'm I'm horrible with names, and that includes band names most of the time. Uh, uh, goodness, uh, Holy Soldier is one that I liked, um, and I still like. I still have them on my title uh, app on my phone. I listen to it in my car all the time. Um, those those are the ones that are coming up straight to mind. Those are the ones I'll probably listen to the most, other than Theocracy. I was just listening to Theocracy last night on the way back from uh, the hotel back to, back to my uh, my apartment. So, um, Ghost Ship is an it is an amazing album for uh, Theocracy. If you haven't tried it, go check it out. Uh, let's see here. Jin <laughs> uh, Sub Kim. Uh, says, what would you guys like to see from worker placement games with a kimchi making theme? I am designing one at the moment. Well, that sounds interesting. Uh, kimchi is probably one of my favorite side dishes of all time worldwide. Uh, it just, you know, it's one of those dis dishes where... It takes some getting used to. I've, I've heard many people, Americans at least, talk about how you know they had people that made kimchi in their apartment complex, and it stunk up the entire apartment while they were making uh, the complex while they were making it, and they hated it and all this other kind of stuff. And I was actually like that. I was like, man, this stuff is gross. It's too spicy, and I just kept trying it, kept trying it because we lived in Korea uh, for goodness. Uh, 2002 to 2009 so we lived in Korea for seven years and so it's always there <laughs> if you go to a restaurant you're gonna have kimchi sitting there so you, you, it's just there so you try it and uh, it, it's actually cool because within Korea there 
are different ways to make kimchi. Like if you eat kimchi that's in the south, like in Gunsan, it's going to have a little bit more of a fishy uh, taste, vibe, smell to it because they put fish oil into it. But they don't do that up in up in the north, where in Seoul, where we used where where we lived last in Weijangbu. So uh, there's even. <laughs> dialects of kimchi making within Korea. So uh, if you don't like one kind of kimchi, you, you try another. So, uh, but I think a worker placement game, that might be kind of cool because you could maybe have like, uh, I mean, I don't know what you're doing, but you could have like, uh, I'm going to make this kind of kimchi or I'm going to make this kind of kimchi. And you have to have different resources and you have to have different ingredients. So I think that might work. It would, it would be interesting. I would, uh, uh, I would be interested to play it. Um, let's see, we're going to go to, have you had a chance to play many of the scenarios from the Memoir, Memoir 44 new flight plan expansion? I haven't had a chance to play more, but man, I really want to. I saw it, we, we, had, we had a copy of new flight plan on our prize table at, at Dice Charter Retreat. And so in the uh, game swap, and that just kind of brought it back to the forefront. And I was like, yeah, I want to try that again. So um, I'd like to get back to it, maybe have some more, you know, me against the internet type stuff going on. I don't know. We'll see. You have to play T5, <laughs> Gene. <laughs> Gene says you have to play TI4 on the cruise now. Uh, well, you know, uh, okay. Well, tentatively, all right, tentatively, because I don't even know if I'm going to the cruise. I don't know what in the future and that's part of this whole process right the uncertainty of it and uh, that's what's weighing so heavily upon me right now um, it is very sobering to take a step out of a comfort zone that's been there for so long um, I've done it uh, once and and well big when when we left korea that was kind of a step but at that point i already had a job lined up and th that was kind of a security net you know of course there was all of the the uncertainty about how am i going to get all of our stuff how am i going to get my family over the back over the uh, pacific ocean but this is um very much taking a step and not knowing where my foot's gonna fall. That's, and that's what's really kinda weighing heavy on me right now. So, um, if if I'm on the cruise, Gene, I will play TI4. Okay, so if I'm there, I will play. That's my promise to you. Um, but I may not, okay, that's that's the only thing. So, um, I, I'm, I'm really kind of uh, going with the flow downstream right now. But if I'm there, Gene, I will play. Uh, uh, Bella asks me, you can kind of do uh, a London accent, but can you do a Yorkshire accent? And the question I have been told by many people, I have actually also been, now I think it may have been in jest, but I had one, one gentleman uh, stop me. As I was, I can't even remember what convention it was. It might have been Essen or UKGE or something like that. And he made it a very strong, pointed, um, he made a very strong point that I cannot do a Scottish accent. Um, so stop doing it. And that was face to face. I've had people do that. Uh, I just got a, a comment a few days ago, um, I think on our Abomination Life Play video, um, that <laughs> somebody that said, I've lived in London, uh, I've lived in England my entire life. You, and I know he said, I've never heard anybody sound like your English accent. You cannot do it, so stop doing it. And of course, there was it was tongue in cheek. He, he was very light, it was very lighthearted about it. Um, I sent it back saying that, uh, you know, it's it, it's just a bit of fun, right? Um, and so, uh, that that was that was that, but. Um, I don't think I can do a Yorkshire accent um, because I don't know what a Yorkshire accent sounds like. Uh, and if I did try to mimic it, it probably would not be what you would expect it to be. Uh, let's see here. Um, I have uh, another person says, my wife says that you remind her very much of Walter from The Big Lebowski. Have I ever seen it? No, 
I have not. So I don't know if uh, I don't I don't know if that's a compliment or not. But um, thank you. I'll just say that. Uh, Okay, this one, this one is worthy. Justin asks, have you tried the new Citadel line of contrast paints? No, I've not tried them. I haven't got any of them. I haven't been able to get any of them, and they haven't sent me any, and I'm not, I don't expect them to. Um, but I, I just haven't. I, the only reason I say that is, I, is to, to say that, no, I haven't tried it. Um, and what I have done, though, I've watched a good number of videos on them and uh, listened to a lot of what different people are saying, and what I'm surmising from all of the information that I've gathered about contrast paints is that um, it, they seem to be billed a little bit as a uh, kind of like liquid talent almost. That's a Rob Warren used to say that all the time. Uh, but um, I don't know that they are because you can definitely misuse them. Uh, so I think it takes, uh, I, 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 I've seen videos where people are just kind of slapping it on and it, it looks okay but not not good like other pictures i've seen i've watched people who are who are seasoned painters use it and it looks very good when they use it so i don't know that it's the entry point that it that it feels like it's being billed as for for painting miniatures but i think they're cool and i want to try them i just haven't been able to yet uh let's see here <laughs> That's funny. Sad to see you go, Sam. Will you be watching more Blackhawks games now? I don't know why I would because, um, yeah. I don't know how changing my job means that I'm going to be watching more Blackhawks games. I mean, I can't find more. I can't find Blackhawks games down here because they don't cover them down here, and I don't know where I'm going, so I don't know that I'm going to be in a place that will cover them more. So, huh, there's that. Um, so... Excuse me. Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, oh, this is a good one. Glad to hear. Uh, glad you guys are going to PAX Unplugged again. Any thoughts on how you think it compares to other cons events you attend? Uh, PAX Unplugged is very well run. One of the th one of the coolest things I think about PAX Unplugged is their. Um, uh, I don't remember what they call it. They have a very specific name for their volunteer force for security and, and that type of thing, keeping things running. Um, but boy, have they got their heads screwed on straight as far as running a convention is concerned, security, making sure people, every booth has their own representative that they can call and ask questions uh, to at any given point in time. Uh, and those representatives are very professional, they're friendly, they, they know what they're doing as far as uh, what a, an exhibitor would need and, and that type of stuff. So uh, they, they're, they are Johnny on the spot as far as that's concerned. Now, how does it compare as far as the feel uh, to other conventions? To me, the size um, feels like an Origins, um, but it's it's not yet. I think it could be, but it's not yet. Uh, it doesn't feel like a Gen Con or an Essen. And of course, I've only been to PAX Unplugged, and I know that's probably the smallest out of all of the PAXs that they have that are going on. Um, but. It, it feels, especially, maybe it, it might be, it might be Philadelphia, um, because, uh, now, I know that Philadelphia is built by some as the, the city of brotherly shove, but I enjoy going to Philadelphia. I love the historical vibe that Philadelphia has to it. So, for me, maybe it has a little bit more of a homey feeling just because of its location and, and all that kind of thing, but, uh, um, yeah, I don't. I, I think Origins is probably the closest uh, connection to it. Uh, played any more Undaunted? Ray Gear asks. No, I have not. Not yet. Uh, I still want to try more of the scenarios. Um, I, I'm still, you know, not sure how the uh, historical imbalance works there. It's one of my major things. Well, it's not a major thing, but it's one of the only things that I had problems with, quote unquote, is how it worked in that particular game. Um, I've had discussions on, on the Geek um, on that 
the video's uh, comment section there uh, about that. So you guys can go check that out. Um, but I like the game. I think it's fun. I think it, it flows well. It has a good click. It has a good pace. Um, but it just, that historical imbalance seems daunting. <laughs> Pun intended, sorry. Uh, there you go. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Did you play any games at the retreat that you had not played before? Yes. I played Too Many Bones. I've never played that game before. Uh, that might be. Oh, no, I played the, the new, um, modular expansion board for Scythe. I played a game of Scythe and we used that new board, so I played that before. I've played Scythe before though, but it was kind of a relearning game and uh, a very eccentric relearning game at that. So we'll just leave that there, but it was fun. I had a great time, uh, but it probably went longer than it should. Uh, but I did enjoy it and I got trounced. Uh, my score got doubled by the person who won. Um, I'm just not very good at it, but I do enjoy the game. Uh, let's see here. What was the general feel from everyone about Tapestry from the retreat? Mostly positive. I didn't hear anything negative from people who played it at the retreat. Now, that, now I wasn't going around polling people either. So <laughs> don't get me wrong. It's not like I, I have any type of inside, uh, you know, thing there. But... The idea that I was getting is that it was always being played. And I know that some people played it more than once. So um, again, I am not trying to add to the hype train. I'm just saying that it was played and it was always being played, uh, generally speaking. So uh, I didn't, and I didn't hear anything negative. Uh, so there you have it. It looks, it looks amazing. Um, but I, again, that's, that's all, all I can say. <laughs> uh, are you excited about the Egyptian theme come on game that was at Gen Con you're talking about Ankh and yes I am very much we were actually I was talking to somebody about this at the retreat and I, I made this statement if it's got miniatures and it's got Eric Lang's on name on it I'm interested period end of story now he has done some games that I didn't care for the theme or I thought that the miniatures were a little bit over the top and gross and and that kind of made me shy away from liking the game but more often than not, if it's got miniatures and Eric Lang's names on it, Eric Lang's name on it, then I am probably going to enjoy the game. I like his style of design, so to speak, um, but I may be turned off by one thing or another. Um, but I, I really do enjoy his method of designing games. I guess is maybe the right way to say it. I just like stuff that he's done for the most part. Uh, have I played Red Alert yet? And if not, why not? Or if so, what did you think? I have not because I just haven't had time to do it. It is not in here, though. It is over in the other studio, and it is uh, ready to be played. Um, the reason I it, it hasn't really... Um, come to the forefront for me yet is because I was not impressed with the component quality of the game. Uh, and that always kind of even with like Command and Colors Medieval, um, just the blocks, it was, I'm, I, I'm not a big fan of, of block units, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's clean. Uh, and, and it has an air, I guess you could say, of, of, of elegance to it. Um, not so much so with Red Alert. So um, we're going to get to it. Um, it's a Command of Colors game, and I love that system. So I, I, just, I just have to make myself do it um, and that's mainly because I, I wasn't too savvy on the component quality uh, the ships just looked cheap I'll put it that way but again that's just kind of a first impression from from when I opened the box and looked at them for the first time I haven't opened it since but I am gonna get to it mm, let's see um, let's see let's see let's see 
Uh, is there a review for Bang Dice Game Expansion 2 coming? Uh, yes. Um, again, I just haven't had a chance. I, I should have taken it to the retreat. Why didn't I do that? I could have been perfect. Um, I just forgot. Uh, and that's my fault. But, um, uh, yes, to answer your question, yes, it is. Uh, would you play a board game based on the Command and Conquer video games? Uh, sure, I guess. Just depends on what kind of game it is, whether or not I'll like it. But, but yeah, I mean, I used to play those video games uh, when I was, um, uh, I guess, in college. Uh, yeah. So, uh, there you go. What was my favorite game of the retreat? What was my favorite game of the retreat? Well, um, well, I played Blood Rage twice, and but I mean that's my favorite game, so that you know I mean that kind of goes without saying, right? Uh, we played Obscurio uh, once. I played Obscurio once and had a great time playing it. Um, it was very close. We ended up losing, but well, the the Grimoire and the the Loyal Wizards uh, ended up losing the. Um, so, but man, yeah, it was just a great time. It was a great game. I was I was teaching the game, and everybody it was new playing it. Eric Summer was part of it, so you can ask him what he thought. Uh, and I I haven't talked to him about it after that, but um, but uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great a great time, and I think everybody else played it. People were talking about wanting to play it immediately again. I couldn't. Uh, I had to go play the the game of Too Many Bones, um, but. Um, yeah, I think everybody enjoyed it, but uh, that was maybe not my favorite. Uh, what would be my favorite? Um, oh, we got to play we got to play Tannhäuser again with uh, uh, with uh, three other guys, and that was pretty fun. It was just a uh, you know a death match where uh, um, it was the uh, U.S. Army going up against the Obscura Corps, and it was a fun game, a really fun game, and it was a tight game too, uh, but a lot of lot, a lot of fun playing that as well, so uh, just, I don't think there was one uh, that was more fun than any others, I had a, I had a great time playing uh, a, a roll and write with, uh, with uh, Mr. Bonacore and Dietmer, and that was a memorable, and my son, and uh, uh, Pauline, and it was, it was a good time, you know, I, we had a, we had a great time doing that as well, so there's, I didn't have one favorite game that I played. I just enjoyed the entire experience. So, yeah. Ah, da, 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 da. Um, Jamaica versus Extraordinary Adventures Pirates. Huh. I wouldn't make necessarily a connection between those. I think they're different enough games. I guess they're both racing games because you're racing down a track, I guess. But um, uh, I really enjoyed both of the games. But I, I probably like Jamaica a little bit better just for its familiarity. Um, Extraordinary Adventures Pirates is still kind of not uh, solidified in my mind. I'd have to play it again to really um, offer uh, a more intelligent response to that, I guess. Uh, Chang Ching. Wow, I won a copy of Chang Ching at a con raffle. Any good? Yeah, it's a good one. I, I had it on my shelves for a long time, and it still might be there just for the component quality alone. Um, but it, you're you're building the Wall of China, basically, and, and it, it's fun. You're trying to do it before the uh, um, the horde invades. So, I, 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 it's good, but I, I guess you could say it might might feel a little dated, but I don't know. Uh -huh. Since we had a key lime pie uh, dessert night at the Dice Tower Retreat, we're going to go ahead and entertain this one. Gator Dave says, where does key lime pie rank in your hierarchy of deserts? Um, well, I didn't know that key lime pie was a desert. Um, but if you meant to say desserts, Gator Dave, then uh, I would say that it ranks rather low. Um, rather, rather low. I, I am not... 
if I'm going to have desserts, I'm going. I want them to be rich, not tangy. Um, and key lime pie is definitely tangy. Sometimes it is sour to me, and I don't like sour a lot. Um, there are some things like gummies. I like sour gummies if they have the sugar that's kind of on the outside. But even then, I don't like those a lot because I'm not a big candy person. Um, I just don't. I just don't. Uh, I don't eat candy a lot. It's just not what I enjoy. Now, if you, you know, break out a German chocolate cake, or a carrot cake, or a cheesecake, um, now we're talking. You know, that's the kind of stuff that I'm I, I like. But key lime pie is just not, or a coconut cream pie. <laughs> oh. um, but as far as key lime pie is concerned, it's. There are uh, straight key lime pie, it's not bad. Um, but some of the variations that are that, that Tom used to get, I'm, I'm not so much on that because they add like a tangy, um, they add a, a, a tangy fruit with key lime pie, which is just makes it double tangy uh, with a little bit of a different flavor in there. And it's just too much. It's just sour at that point. Um, and I, I want something sweet maybe even you could call it savory uh, and sweet together more than tangy or sour so there you have it check out Horde Devin Stoddard says uh, they have a, a a song called Invert the Inverted Cross um, okay interesting I'll check them out Horde that doesn't sound like a Christian rock band um, uh, oh it's Christian black metal Ugh. See, that's the thing. I don't, I don't really like the, the dark death metal or that style. Um, so we'll see. I'll, I'll check them out, though. Horde. I'll make a note of that. All right, cool. Uh, thanks for answering. Jin Sub Kim says, good luck. Future endeavors. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you, Cuss. Um, and stop it, dude. <laughs> oh, you're going to make me... Uh, if you could only play one more game, what would you pick? Well, that would that would definitely be your number one game, right? Um, the one game that you would play, and if you could only play a game for the rest. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to say Blood Rage. I, I do enjoy the game that much. Now I have been, <laughs> I have been watching the the History Channel Vikings uh, TV show recently. Um, I've never watched it before, so I'm kind of. Not binge watching it because I only watch a couple of episodes at a time, but, um, and yeah, I, when I say that I'm a fan of Vikings, I'm not a fan of everything they did, okay? Um, I, I, it is a point of interest within history for me. That's more what it is. And so, just like any other type of point of interest, if there's a game that, 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 that deals with that point of interest, then I'm interested in it, right? So it's, it's not an, in, you know, my liking Viking things is not an endorsement of, of what they did throughout history um, or what they're known for, rather, because there's a lot that they did that's probably would in some way be considered wholesome, but it, what they're known for, I don't endorse that, okay? So with that having been said, I would probably pick Blood Rage. It is, it is my favorite game, so I would probably pick that. Um, and then I would go and find people who share my love for the game, and, and that would be my game group. Um, that's, of course, uh, largely impossible in some situations, but that would be my answer to your question. If you could only play one more game, which would you pick? Thank you, Ronald Palomino. Uh, the Palomino, by the way, is, is my favorite horse. Uh, so a golden Palomino to be exact. So uh, I just love the way they look. So there you have it. Um, let's see. Uh, so I'm always curious, Bryman XL says, how many hours do you game a week and how many hours a week do you spend on camera? Well, for me, I'm much worse than I think the other guys are at saying what I want to say in a shorter amount of words, <laughs> in a smaller amount of words. 
So usually the time I spend on camera is much more than uh, the other guys are. Uh, well, I'm sorry, per, per game, per game. That, we'll say that because Tom is a crazy person and uh, like reviews 12 games a week. Um, but his style allows him to do that because he doesn't, he doesn't cover everything and he, you know, he's very quick. Um, I'm not like that. So uh, my editing usually takes longer per video than the other guys do as well. So I think I probably spend more time editing than I do on camera. Uh, and then I, 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 I uh, definitely spend more time playing games than I do on camera. But it's almost a, a necessity, right? Because you know a review after editing will be you know anywhere from, from 10 to hopefully 20 minutes. 10 to 20 minutes. That's usually the window that I'm shooting for. If I go over 20, I'm looking for things that I can cut out uh, because I want to try to get down to 20 or even below 20 if, if possible. Um, you know, some some of Tom's stuff is like five minutes, so uh, or eight, 10 minutes, whatever. So uh, a game will take, you know, depending on the the game, maybe on average an hour, you know, hour and a half. Uh, so if it's almost natural that you're going to spend more time playing games than you actually do on camera. Um, uh, but then editing takes a lot of time as well. So um, there's, I hope that's kind of a, a little bit more of a better question answer for you. Let's see. Uh, what type of board game content do you enjoy watching most? Playthroughs, unboxings, reviews, top, top lists? Well, we, I think I enjoy making the top 10 lists uh, most out of everything. Uh, and then after that, uh, playthroughs are very fun, um, of course. Um, but, uh, and then after that, I enjoy uh, making the Miami Dice reviews most um, because I like the, the counterbalance, I guess you could say. Uh, with all the different views that are represented. Uh, and then my solo reviews are my least favorite content to make. Now you asked, what do you enjoy watching most? And I'm a little bit strange that way um, because I, I don't, I, I enjoy watching painting videos. Um, most of the ones that are put out by uh, Warhammer TV those guys are amazing, and they do such a good job of explaining how to do stuff. The problem that I have with them is that I try to then replicate what they do, and I can't, or I have a very difficult time. They make it look really, 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 really easy because they're fabulous painters, right? But I, I've, that's probably the most board game content that I've watched is are the Warhammer TV painting videos uh, that the guys over there do. So it's, uh, that's, that's probably the answer. Any updates on uh, Dwellings of Eldervale? Not that I know of, but uh, thank you for your screen name, Leroy Porkins. I like, <laughs> love it. Um, uh, am I okay? My eyes look very tired. Hmm. It might be the lighting. Um, no, I don't. Uh, I'm not tired, but. Uh, I guess you can say I'm a little choked up, but but I'm okay. I'm fine. I don't I don't feel strange or anything like that. Uh, let's see here. Is Galactic Warlords a good game? Yes. Thank you for the easy answer. The easy question. Uh, greetings from Budapest, Hungary. Your name is Heel E. Are you? Yeah, you are Sam Hurt E. Now is your oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. I, I, that's what I get for putting that up there without uh, reading the whole thing. Well, thank you. I uh, appreciate you. Appreciate that. Wish you all the best in the future. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Let's put this all there. Uh, do you think the upcoming changes to kids' content on YouTube will affect the Dice Tower at all? I have no idea. Uh, maybe that is more of a Tom question than anything else. Uh, <laughs> no, Gator Dave, I'm not going to do the Scottish action for the entire cruise. That would be very tiring for my voice. Um, let's see here. 
Uh, any upcoming games you're looking forward to playing? Jonathan J. Yes, uh, we actually have Sean from the U.S. arm of Mythic Games coming in on Friday to do a uh, recorded live play, not live, of uh, the new uh, 1.5 rule set for, for Joan of Arc, time, or time, time of Legends Joan of Arc. Um, and I think... I hope he's bringing in the new Teutonic Knights expansion. So I'm really looking forward to that one because Joan of Arc is one of my favorite games this year so far. So um, we'll have to do that. All right. Triple O seven. How do you feel about Spider-Man not being in the MD MCU anymore? And any thoughts about phase four and beyond? No, don't have any thoughts about that, but Oh my goodness, what a mistake it is. Spider-Man is probably one of the most endearing characters in the MCU. Uh, I mean, kids love that character. Why in the world would you uh, do this? Um, I, I don't know who the bad guy is here, and I don't really care. But, oh my goodness, that is just a huge, huge misstep in my opinion, uh, taking him out of the MCU. Uh, just horrible idea. Um, so the people who are in charge of making those decisions, you are making a mistake. I know you're probably not watching, but there you have it. Um... Uh, Adrian Chrysostomo, uh, do you have any clarity for me as to when the Blood Rage Kickstarter is landing? Did you back it? I did not back it, um, so I don't know when it is. I did talk to a few people that were anticipating theirs coming very soon, so um, there you have it. But I don't have any any type of insider information for you there. I, I apologize. Um, <clears throat> Um, <laughs> Andrew McGuire says, uh, Andrew McGuire says, never mind the Yorkshire accent, your difference is commendable, thank you, uh, but you have no reason not to demonstrate a Korean accent. Um, uh, I can't think of anything to say in a Korean accent. That's the problem. Uh, a, a Yorkshire accent or a Scottish accent is largely going to be an English language with just a accent thrown on there, right? Um, but a Korean, you actually have to speak Korean. I don't have any phrases or uh, anything like that that uh, uh, comes out of me right now, so I apologize. <coughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Brew Geek One says, with, with contrast, talking about the contrast paints from Citadel, uh, you still need to have solid brush control, and that's true. That's why I'm saying that I don't think that they are a beginner level uh, kind of paint. You have at med intermediate at best, um, if not experienced. So, uh, I, yeah, you just have to, you have to see how it's going to work. Uh, this is uh, uh, Zhao Shambul, uh says, do you think any game, board game, can dethrone Blood Rage? For me, it's going to take a pretty penny t in order to do that. And I don't mean I have to be paid off. What I mean that is it has to be a really, I mean, it has to hit all the cylinders. It has to hit just everything has to be perfect for it to dethrone uh, Blood Rage at this point. And I just, I don't see it happening, but, you know, hey, uh, the first time I played Blood Rage, I didn't think it would become my, my favorite game either. So there you have that. Uh, I mean, uh, Tom's, Tom's actually said, hey, have you gone back and watched our Miami Dice review of Blood Rage? You didn't like it as much as you did. You, you, know, you were saying, you know, it's okay, and all that type of stuff. But I just really, I grew into it, and I really enjoy it now. So um, I don't think so, but hey, who knows? It could happen. <laughs> uh, Bella Ferguson, so are you going to uh, go for a job at Command developing more blood rage? No, I, I, I don't. Ha again, I, I have n no plans. I'm, I'm very much in an open slate. But um, 
I've, I've looked for a few jobs in the industry and, and largely I've been, I guess, I guess looking for the, uh, applying for the wrong kinds of jobs because I've hit a, I've hit a wall on all of them so far. So um, I'm, I'm very much open to, to a lot of uh, suggestions, I guess you could say. So I don't want to turn this into a, uh, um, a, a commercial or anything like that, but uh, you know, the, it's, it's out there and I'm open. <clears throat> uh, is Dice Tower planning a Toronto visit in 2020? Uh, Adrian, I don't know. Usually the times that we've gone to, well, well, the only times that we've gone to Toronto is when we were up there for the Gathering of Friends uh, in uh, New York. So whether, we're, whether uh, the Dice Tower is going to be going there in, uh, to Toronto in 2020, I don't know. Are you, <laughs> are you guys ever going to finish that brick wall behind you? <laughs> no, because these are accents, sir. Um, we're just accentuating the wall with the dice, with, with the uh, uh, bricks. So, yes. Uh, let's see here. Uh... <laughs> Oh, latecomers are coming in and getting shocked. Yeah, go back and watch the first few minutes and then come back um, if, if need be. What were your thoughts on the Bear game? Sad face. Uh, home game against the backers, and then our offense just kind of goes. <laughs> At least we held them to 10, you know. Um, it's not like it was a blowout or anything like that. But, yeah, anytime we get hit, beat by the Packers, it stings a little bit more dumb cheese heads I have a lot of friends that are Packers fans that sounds weird doesn't it but it, I don't hate Packers fans they're our rival what, what do you expect um, <laughs> geek says the big Lebowski comment was a compliment Walter was cool okay Played by John Goodman. Okay, I will take that as a compliment. Thank you. Um, I, I, again, I haven't watched the movie, but I do like John Goodman as an actor. So I will. Uh, uh, not knowing any of the shenanigans Walter may or may not have pulled in The Bill, Big Lebowski, I will take that as a compliment. Thank you. Uh, da -da -da. Um, let's, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm searching for, for more questions here, so let's see. Uh, any suggestions on a tabletop play mat? Uh, Jason, if you look at the um, Game Toppers uh, by uh, uh, Kevin Burkhardsmeyer, uh, we call him Berkey, um, his tabletop play mats are amazing. Uh, they are very nice. Uh, I don't remember how much he charges for them, so I can't vouch for affordability or anything like that. But most of the stuff, I mean, his whole thing is having affordable game accessories and that type of stuff. But I don't remember how much they are. But the quality is amazing. So go check out uh, Game Toppers and the playmats that they offer. Um, so there you go. Enforcers, yeah. PAX security are known as enforcers. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, a, a, a rather rough and tumble name for people who are very professional and, and very considerate and very, uh, very much uh, they know how to take care of you. Uh, but they are very, very nice. Very good. Um, let's see. <laughs> um, let's see here. Can we get some of the Sam remakes for Dwarven Metal? I've enjoyed those tangents on videos. Yeah, diggy hole. Um, what stage of the process do you do dry brushing? Um, it depends on what I'm dry brushing and what it needs to look like. Um, usually it's probably, I, I guess I would say the second to last because details will go um, after dry brushing, uh, but then you might put a, a, a clear coat over it or well, which would make it a third to last. Um, but 
generally speaking, it's, it's one of the last steps for me, at least, again, that's what I do is what I do, and I'm not saying it's it's uh, what anybody else should or should not do, um, but it's one of the last steps for me because you get your base code on there. You, uh, I even usually, I even sometimes do a couple of a couple of steps of dry brushing. Like I'll do a a dry brush in, in this um, shade of whatever color it is, and then I'll do another dry brush of a, a lighter shade of that same color to provide a little bit of a, uh, a, a bleed effect, I guess. Um, so it just depends on what, what you're doing, but I would say it's, it's fairly later in the process. Uh, uh, costs from the Dice Odyssey asks, have you gotten a chance to try uh, Cloud Spire? And the answer to that is no, but I watched some people playing it, and, and I watched from afar. I didn't just sit there and watch them play it at the Dice Tower Retreat, and it looks like a fairly convoluted game. Um, uh, and that's after playing Too Many Bones, which is a convoluted game uh, uh, and complex. Now, I'm going to be talking more about that on Friday because I'm going to do a uh, first impressions of Too Many Bones this week. So I'll talk more about that on, on Friday, and you can tune in for that. But generally speaking, um, seeing the, the size of the game, I knew it was big, but seeing the size of the game, I'm a little bit less excited to play it because it's got a very big footprint. But I don't know anything about gameplay. So... I'm, I'm looking forward to, I'm still looking forward to trying it, but um, I, I haven't yet. Uh, let's see here. Alfredo Villegas, Villegas. Um, hello from a tiny town in Mexico. Mexico, what would you do to foster the gaming culture in a place that has no, that has none of it? No nearby stores, no one knows them. Uh, well, again, I think a nearby store helps the gaming culture in a certain area, but I don't think it's necessary. All right. Now, I don't uh, please understand what I'm saying here. I'm not saying that um, that stores are, you know, whatever. I'm not saying that at all, because I, I, I think uh, when a game store does it right, they can be a huge influence in the community uh, and, and foster a very deep um, growing uh, love for the hobby. But I don't think it's necessary. Um, it, social networking, I guess you could say, for all of its vices, um, does have a lot of virtue in it as well in that you can use it to connect with people in your area that you may not otherwise run into in your regular daily, day-to-day -day bustle. So... Um, you know, here uh, Tom has used uh, Meetup, uh, the the website to connect with people in the Miami area, and and he's been part of uh, kind of uh, organizing our meetups at Cool Stuff up in Kendall uh, a lot. So, but that's all that was all done from an online standpoint. It, it, some of it was meeting people at uh, local stores, uh, but. A lot of it was simply connecting online with different people in your area that share the same likes as you do or you know share the same love for the hobby that you do and I think that can be I think people can be uh, a, a better uh, maybe not better but a more solid I guess you could say um, base to build upon uh, because stores come and go right um, uh, but but people are there and people come and go too, but uh, I, I, I think that uh, you, you might want to just try to connect, connect with people, you know, uh, and, and, and not kind of feel like you have to wait for a store to show up in your area before you can try to start fostering a gaming community. All right. Um, uh, did you try the Rise of Fenris expansion with Scythe yet? No, I didn't. Uh, we were going to try it but we didn't uh we just decided to go with base game with the uh the, the newer modular board or random setup board or whatever you call it um which i also don't know if i like that either um 
But anyway. <clears throat> oh, that's interesting. Um, Micah's or Mika's World says dry brushing before putting on the new contrast paints provides good depth. So that's a, that's an interesting uh, point to make. Uh, the contrast is all about providing depth and and bringing out highlights and stuff like that. But if you dry brush before uh, you put those contrast paints on, it really makes it better. I don't know that, but that's what uh, Micah has said. That's a good point. I might uh, give that a whirl. Let's see. Is Galactic Warlords a good solo game? I don't know. I've not played it solo, uh, and I'm not one that usually plays games solo. You probably know that, but uh, I don't. I have no idea how it plays solo, uh, but I do enjoy the game. Uh, I saw Tom's review of Unmatched. How do you like it? Did you enjoy it? I've not played it yet. I unboxed it, and it looks amazing. And I love that they're using the same uh, color system for line of sight that Tannhäuser uses. So there's that, but I've not played Unmatched yet. Uh, so we'll see. I don't know what the best game of the retreat is, Roy. Oh, um, there were just so many of them, and I, I had, there was from different, I, I mean, I played, you know, all versus one game of, of Jaws. I played uh, um, a, a, a game of Time's Up with a group of people. That was a really fun time. I played Obscurio. I played Blood Rage. I played Tannhäuser. Um, uh, I played, um, a, 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 I don't remember the Roll and Write game with Bonacore. Uh, I just played so many different kinds of games. It was just the experience of playing with the other people that were there. That's really the cool thing about it. It wasn't really the games necessarily. I played two games of Blood Rage. That was fun, and I enjoyed both of those. So, uh, oh, played a, played a game of Pride as well. Had a great time with that. Um, but uh, firmly solidified in my mind that uh, pride is not a family game <laughs> it's just too mean uh so uh and we played with uh one two three four and we played with six people oh boy was that a cutthroat game and uh yeah so um but a very fun game had, had a great time playing <laughs> Have I considered becoming a playtester for hire? I would totally hire you to playtest my game. Uh, I have no idea, Chad. I appreciate you saying that, but no, I have not. Um, Oh, that's a cool question. Board Game Fangirl says, Sam, Go, Chess, Cribbage have been around uh, for uh, some for thousands of years. What modern game do you think will still be played 100 years from now? Ticket to Ride, something else? I could definitely see Ticket to Ride being played 100 years from now. Uh, as far as modern games are concerned, um, you know, there's games like uh, Liar's Dice. Um, that concept has been in play for hundreds of years already, so it's probably going to be continued to be played, I think. Um, it seems to me that the real classics, I guess you could say, the real ones that really kind of stick around for long periods of time are abstracted games um, because they have a timeless quality to them. Um, as far as their their components are concerned, as far as almost anything, uh, the rule sets are very usually very simple. So I would imagine it's some kind of abstract game that that uh, uh, sticks around for that that long. Which one? Eh, I don't know. Um, but uh, that would be what I would come to. I would imagine some kind of abstract game is the one that's going to be sticking around. Um, you know, maybe it's. I don't know. I, I don't know. I just I, I, I just think that's probably it. Um, but, but I think, but I mean, Ticket to Ride is, is an abstracted game, really, right? It's, it uses very familiar Rummy-esque mechanics where you're using those sets to play uh, your trains onto the board, and, and it's abstracting traveling around the world so, or around a country or what have you. So I think it has, it, it has the potential of doing that, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, 
Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Um, okay, everybody's telling Kabuki Kid to wind, rewind and all this other kind of stuff. Um, that, that's where I'm at. Um, so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Pete, sad shark emoji here. Pete, you'd be proud of me. I, I played uh, Jaws with somebody last, uh, with, a, with a couple last night, and um, it was almost embarrassing how well the shark did. Um, it was the first time that they had played it, and I probably didn't teach them as well as I should have. But um, I, tried, I tried to, you know, they were savvy gamers, so I, I pretty much just let them uh, do whatever they wanted to. But dice rolls were going my way. Um, where the swimmers were coming out um, in the different beaches in, in Act 1, those were all just going my way. And it was just... Yeah, it was it was definitely a a shark tastic game of uh, of Jaws. So you'd be proud. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, okay, this is a good one, Brian. How do you feel about print and play games? Um, I don't I don't do them. Uh, it's not that I think that you shouldn't. It's it's that I I just don't. I don't want to take the time and resources to to print out a game before I can play it. I'm, I'm very much an aesthetic person and if the game is not aesthetically pleasing, which in my opinion most print and play games aren't, then I, I have no interest in playing them. Now I know that might seem very shallow, but it's just I don't like playing games that don't look good. Um, that's just part of that's just part of me. I'm sorry. Uh, so I don't uh, I don't like print and play games. I've never done that. I've never done it, um, and I don't think I ever will. This is a good question. Random bit. Do you find that your enjoyment of a game partly relates to your mood? Any games you find yourself enjoying regardless of mood? Uh, well, definitely my top ten. I usually enjoy those games no matter what mood they am. And if I'm in a bad mood, that will usually lift my spirits if I play any of those. Um, but yes, yeah, I think mood can definitely affect how you enjoy a game. If you are hungry, for example, or rather if you're hangry, uh, you're so hungry that it's starting to put you in a bad mood, that definitely affects how you're going to enjoy a game or not because it will also affect how you interact with the people that are playing the game, which will also affect their enjoyment of the game. So, you know, things like if we're doing a live playthrough, I make sure, you know, I don't, I don't eat breakfast every morning, but if, I, if we're doing a live playthrough that, that a publisher is paid for and sponsored, I always make sure I have breakfast before I come in. Uh, I always make sure I have um, a coffee or something like that. You know, I don't always drink coffee every every single morning, but um, I want to be on my toes um, if I'm doing something like that. And I want to make sure that I've had breakfast and that I got a, got a good night's sleep before. Um, because you want to be in a good mood when you are especially doing those live plays. Uh, and I think if I do that, I have a clearer read on, in the future, whether or not I liked that game. Um, because there aren't other things playing upon my emotions uh, from you know, whether it's uh, not necessarily a bad mood, but just things that are uh, that, that can cloud your mind. I don't know if you, you get what I mean, but yeah, I, I think that mood definitely uh, can have a huge say in whether or not you like a game. Um, if you're in a bad mood, you're just going to be more nitpicky about stuff. Uh, the, sm the, the, the small things will seem like big things because they just set you off. And so uh, I think you're... You're hitting the nail on the head there. But my top 10 are generally, uh, uh, well, I, I could probably even say my top 100 are all games that if I'm playing them, I will, uh, I will be able to enjoy them whether or not. And if I'm in a bad mood, that will usually pull me out of that bad mood because I enjoy them that much. <clears throat> Would you want to see 
a Star Wars game based on the new trilogy. I'm asking, of course, since you love Star Wars, would you like it uh, for a change from the original trilogy? Well, the uh, again, there's at present there's three trilogies that are that you're talking about. You're talking about the prequel trilogy, then you're also talking about the original trilogy, which is four, five, and six, and then you have episodes seven, eight, and now nine this year. So, do I want a board game coming out from the 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 new the newest three movies? Uh, sure. Uh, and, and the reason I, I, I might seem a little reluctant is because it's Star Wars. A lot of people are just, uh, for lack of a better phrase, just you know, getting, their, um, getting their pants in a wad about, oh my goodness, something, it's a movie, people. Um, and I don't even think it's a, this episode seven and eight, I don't even think they're bad movies. I just think they're not what you were expecting. And because it's not what you were expecting, and forgive me, you know exactly what the, the movies should have had in them, then they're bad because they weren't what you thought they should be. And I'm sorry, that, should, that just shouldn't be the case, right? Now, that being said, do I wish they would have maybe used some of the books, like the Kevin J. Anderson books and the... Uh, um, uh, uh, the Thrawn trilogy. Should, do I think they should have gone that way? Yes. That would have been amazing. I would have loved to see Darksaber the movie. Um, I would have loved to see a movie about I, Jedi. I would have loved to see so many different things about the books that were already there, ripe for the making. But they didn't. They used, I, I think they used part of it. Um, they did some things that were in some of those movies, but it's not a big deal. It's still Star Wars. People are like, well, I'm not gonna go see episode nine because I don't, I don't like the new trilogy. It's just a bunch of uh, cash grabs. Of course it's a cash grab. It's Star Wars. Star Wars is a cash grab. But at the same time, it's Star Wars. And I'm a Star Wars fan, so I'm gonna enjoy it. I don't care. It's gonna be fun. Um, love the new Han Solo movie. A lot of people said that they didn't like it, but I loved it. Why? Because he's my favorite character, and I thought the guy that they got to play him did a great job. So, you know, there's that. So, would I want a, a Star Wars game based on the new trilogy? Sure. Great. That would be awesome. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Did I get anything? Okay, Hazel Wolf says, did I get anything nice from the game exchange? Was there anything in that exchange that surprised you? Well, I actually got one of the things that really surprised me in Open Eyes, and I got this thing called Global Chess. You go check it out if you want to, because I think you can find pictures of it and stuff like that online. But it's a weird, interesting way to play Global Chess. I don't know that I'm going to play it the way it's set. I'm going to try to find a chess board that fits the pieces that are on it, because they are metal. They're metal pieces, chess pieces, and they look amazing. And uh, nobody was taking it because it was, I guess, too eccentric. But I just love the look of it, so I took it. Um, I took that, and then I got a copy of Santorini because um, I hadn't got one yet, and I really like that game. So, um, but uh, yes, there were two copies of Gloomhaven. Roy got one of them, um, and there was oh, there was an all-in copy of uh, Zombicide Invader. There was an all-in copy of um, uh, Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea that Roy brought in. Um, there was amazing stuff on that prize table, so that was very cool. Uh, Nelson Galvin says, I haven't heard you mention D&D before. What are your experiences, memories of playing it? Well. I've had a, I got a lot of good memories. I have a lot of bad memories about it. Usually the bad memories are stupid things that I did <laughs> while playing it, uh, just being a teenager and, and not, not knowing how to read the room and that type of thing. Um, but uh, I, I, I enjoyed Dungeons & Dragons before. Um, of course, it has that stigma related to it from the past, but um, it's kind of a negative thing. But um, I think role-playing games are great. I think they... Uh, 
uh, allow you to kind of open your imagination. Um, so they're fun. They're great. Um, they're just not something I do now, mainly because I, I have less opportunity to do them, I guess. Um, let's see here. We are out of time. So... Uh, all right. Um, <laughs> uh, some stuff. Uh, is this trolling or uh, is Sam really leaving? Um, yes, I am. Um, uh, the exact date is unclear, but uh, you can go back and watch the first part of the video and, and that will give you more explanation. So there you have it. Um, uh, Going to miss the uh, Memoir 44 live plays the most? Yeah, well, maybe somebody will do them. Um, but we're, we'll probably try to get some more of those in because I, uh, now that somebody actually asked me about it, I want to get some more of those uh, new flight plan scenarios done. So maybe we'll do that soon. Um, all right, let's go for the next five minutes. Let's go ahead and do a lightning round. And uh, uh, where you ask me this or that, and I have to choose one or uh, the other. Yeah, Koss, change your name. Koss. All right, so here we go. Lightning round. Oh, wow. Man, I missed so many. I'm sorry. Uh, so many questions that I missed. Uh, but anyway, uh, here we go. I'm scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Um, nothing yet, nothing yet, nothing yet. All right, here we go. Platoon or Full Metal Jacket? Uh, I like Platoon better, but Full Metal Jacket was good too. Tom or Z, I never answer, I never answer that. I'm not going to start. Tom or Z, pfft. Italy or France? I've been to France, I haven't been to Italy. Uh, so based only on that, France. Dice Masters or Star Wars Destiny? I'm gonna go with Dice Masters on that one. Um, let's see, <laughs> Rainer or Kabuki? Hmm, uh, both. Scrambled or fried eggs? I like scrambled eggs better. Um, I also look. I li also like putting salsa on my scrambled eggs. Uh, I don't like eating just scrambled eggs. Um, salsa and or cheese um, sprinkled on top. Very good. White or brown sugar? Don't care. Um, brown sugar. I like. Uh, I don't know. I like brown sugar taste a little bit better. I guess maybe. So there you go. Packers or cheese? Packers are cheese. There you go. Um, Texas or the rest of the world? Come on, man. You can take you can take the boy out of Texas. You can't take Texas out of the boy. You gotta go Texas. Uh, Raiders of the North Sea or Architects of the West Kingdom? I'm gonna go with Architects of the West Kingdom. Um, Z's birthday party or Tom's birthday party? I'm gonna go with Tom's birthday party because I know it'll be a little bit more tame. I think. I think Z is a little bit more wilder than the rest of us, although he's not that much wilder. But I don't know. I could see some. I, I could. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Never mind. Um, Onitama or Hanami Koji? I'm going to go with Onitama, but I really like both of those games. But I think Onitama has more flexibility and age range. So I'm going to go with Onitama. <laughs> One more minute. Vikings or Lions? Is this a football question? Neither. Although, between the two, I'd go with Minnesota because I'm rooting for Detroit, period. No offense. Anybody from Detroit. Worker placement or action selection? Ooh. Both. Catching fish or eating fish? Eating fish. 
I cannot stand fishing. It is so boring and it stinks and it's hot and there's bugs and you're outside and it's hot and um, you're on a boat and it's hot. So eating fish, definitely. Driving or flying on long trips, that depends. If I'm, if I'm uh, traveling by myself, then I, I probably usually prefer flying because, you know, get it over with. But uh, if I'm with other people, I enjoy driving just because there's the camaraderie there. But, but uh, uh, more often than not, flying is better because you, you get the traveling over with. <sighs> Gray or balding? <laughs> Both. Uh, Midgard, champions or reavers? I like champions better, but I really like reavers as well. So, um, but I definitely like champions. That's another game that I played. That was also a good game uh, during the uh, retreat. So, uh, capes or utility belts? Utility belts. Capes are too dangerous. Bibimbap or Japche? Bibimbap. Bibimbap is, is probably my, my favorite healthy dish from Korea. The other uh, uh, is uh, bulgogi, and that is definitely not healthy, but um, it's very good. Uh, there you go. Uh, that's about it. We are out of time. We're actually over time. I went six minutes instead of five, so I have to stop here. Bye. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. But I am going to go ahead and end it here. Thank you so much for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. We're going to get out of here. We've got other work to do for the rest of the week, and uh, uh, we're going to be back. Um, uh, we don't have anything tomorrow. Uh, but we do have crowd surfing, I think, on Wednesday. And then we also have uh, board game breakfast. Roy and I are going to be taking the helm of that. So, <laughs> cats away, the mice will play. Um, that's going to be on Thursday. And we're also going to have, uh, well, we'll have a recorded playthrough of uh, 1.5 edition of Joan of Arc. Uh, that will be going up probably next week sometime, I would imagine. But that's being recorded on Friday. And then we're also going to have a testing Friday uh, uh, live stream on Friday afternoon. So you can keep uh, open ears for that one. So that's it from me. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. We thank you for joining us. And we'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Bye. How do I stop this? I just hit finish? Okay. Let me close that and finish.